Well, thanks for clicking on to the Saturday edition of Logan's European Outlook. Yes, I'm sitting in the conservatory at the back of the house yet again. And there's a very good reason why I'm not sitting in the living room, because this is actually the warmest part of the house. If you, you want to try and save energy and not run your heating as much as you can, um, if you're a cheapskate like myself, um, actually, one recommendation I would say is get yourself into the conservatory, especially... If the sun is on the you know on the correct side of the house during the afternoon, despite the air temperature maybe only being two three Celsius outside, uh, feeling below freezing in any breeze, the amount of energy now coming off the sun is really doing a work, and you'll probably notice that in your car it might be freezing outside, but actually your car feels quite nice indeed, and that's because the strength of the sun is actually of late late September strength now, believe it or not. It's another reason why we're seeing a lot of snow melt, despite, you know, temperatures potentially feeling quite cold. You're saying to yourself, how is there so much rapid snow melt, despite the air temperature maybe being, you know, a degree or two above the freezing mark back in December, that snow wouldn't melt at that same temperatures, because of course, the strength of the sun is that much more uh, prominent now compared to what we had just a couple of months ago, what would have happened if this cold spell, this exact cold spell, and we'll say this every time, uh, happened a month ago? So back in February 2021, we had a sudden stratospheric warming. We had temperatures that got down to minus 23 at Bray Mar. First time since 95 that that happened. So you say to yourself, with temperatures that have been you know, dropping into the teens below freezing for four straight nights. And we may get close to that again in the north tonight before um, cloud and possible snow arrives in the south. Really a, a very, very impressive run of cold. There's no question about that. Hard to get below freezing now during the daytime, especially with any sunshine. The, sh the strength of the sun is really doing a work. But at nighttime, under clear skies, especially with there's snow on the ground, even without snow, temperatures are dropping. So um, it, uh, another tremendous shot here from the Hellfire Club yesterday uh, from Shrine Bruin just outside. Uh, well, I'm assuming it's just outside Dublin. I do apologize for my ignorance. Um, Shrine will probably be able to correct me with this. I'm not actually entirely sure where Hellfire Club uh, is located, which is quite bad. But uh, certainly it looks as if it's quite high up and uh, indeed there is a lot of snow on the ground at least if there was some unofficial reports of 50 centimeters of snow fell with that system of course that they uh, occurred um during the latter half of thursday and into friday morning so lots of things of course going on and uh, we are seeing snow moving north as we speak so this is an impressive run of cold so how often especially in recent times have we seen a run like this here so this is a tweet i've literally just released on twitter lo and behold and uh, we've had four straight nights where the temperature has been minus 13.6 or colder and uh, I think you have to go back to 2010 for the last time this has happened. Now, of course, these are, you know, without doubt, the coldest temperatures for the month of March since 2010. Uh, I believe um, Harry uh, Harada, um, I believe that's his pronunciation. Uh, we didn't see um, three nights below minus 15 in 2010 i think you have to maybe go back to 2001 for the last time that we've seen three nights below minus 15 uh anywhere in the uk during the month of march so that is quite noteworthy of course um and uh, like i've said do we see minus 10 or lower tonight in Alpmahara because the air temperature is dropping already and the sun is still uh, up and uh, it looks as if we are still well to the north of that snow and um, increased cloud cover. So if we can get to the right chart, that would help. This is Europe, by the way, current temperatures as of 10 to 5 in the evening. Look at these here, temperatures on the east coast of Spain, Balearics. 
almost summer-like warm. So we do have warmth to speak about. We've had very warm conditions in southeastern Europe. Relatively chilly across central portions of Europe, relatively cold across the north of Europe, as you can see here. We can have a look at the UK current temperatures. I think it was another day below freezing up in the far north, up in the frozen wastes of northern Scotland. Um, Caithness and Sutherland, Sutherland has been very, very cold. Minus 4.3 Celsius currently at Altnahara. And I believe the, the uh, daytime maximum was below freezing. I think that's a third straight morning below freezing, uh, or third morning out of four uh, below freezing here, which is reasonably impressive, even for northern Scotland. 14 Celsius, by the way, down the south coast of Ireland, only one degree at Loch Fay in northern Ireland. So big contrast in temperature over Ireland. We've got... the. Uh, a little bit of back and forth temperature-wise here across the mainland here. 12 Celsius down in Camborne and Com uh, Cornwall. We've got a zero at uh, in parts of Mid Wales. And we have got the uh, six, seven, eight Celsius in southeast and east Anglia. So relatively mild down here. Of course, a cold afternoon once again further north and east. So... This is the current uh, radar chart of weather underground. And you can see here that we've got quite the messy picture. More rain than there is snow, may I add, because there is milder air. It's getting lifted north, northeast. But, uh, of course, as this moisture starts to tap into this cold air, which is cooling, as this lifts north, pulling the milder, we are seeing cooling ahead of that boundary. So therefore, we are likely to see uh, an element of disruptive snow through uh, high road routes of the Cairngorms, uh, Grampian, Northwest Highlands. It may escape it. And this is where I'm thinking that the temperature will drop below minus 10 once again, maybe even in the teens below freezing. If conditions remain the same long enough before this mess arrives from the south, and I wouldn't be surprised if we get a fresh cover in the snow here uh, just above Inverness. So we've also got the, the mess that uh, brought the foot of snow in parts of uh, you know, Mansfield, Macclesfield, Sheffield, Leeds during the course of early yesterday morning. Parts of, uh, of Wales, we've seen parts of eastern Northern Ireland, as well as parts of Ireland also with a significant covering of snow as we've seen in Shrine's pictures. Uh, this is the feature right here that dropped the snow early yesterday morning. It's now into you know crack off, edging into the north of uh, Slovakia and in the southeastern portions of Europe. Here uh, we've seen a covering across parts of the Netherlands with this uh, event also, and uh, I think we're going to have a fairly chilly night actually with high pressure and control. Temperatures aren't too bad at the moment. But uh, I think we are going to see the temperatures dropping off. So moisture lifting north, as you can see here, as per the latest run in the GFS. So into the early hours of the morning, snow across the far north. Then we'll see that system clear out. And then we've got the next mess that comes in during the day on Sunday. Re reasonably deep area of low pressure, quite windy conditions, a spell of uh, rain, possibly sporadic in nature. Rattling in, we've got a fairly brisk southwesterly wind. Notice the squeeze in the isobars, and the noticeable aspect to this will be the warmer air getting transported from southwest to northeast. Here, notice here, even rain reaching the far north of the mainland. Here, as you can see, but as it engages with cold air that tries to sink back south, we may see a significant snow event early. Monday morning. So we need to keep an eye on that actually. This is quite interesting. Very mild across the bulk of England, Wales, Ireland, Northern Ireland. But there is colder air starting to kind of filter south once again, engaging with that moisture and possibly turning to significant snow. And then it's as that area of low pressure starts to slip east, we then open the door to Arctic winds once again. And we could start to see snow coming back south over England during the course of Monday night 
and into Tuesday. Of course, this is one model run. There will be fluctuations in the overall solution. Then we've got that uh, cold northerly flow once again. Notice we've got another boundary, another band of snow moving from north to south over the British Isles through the course of next week. We've got another feature moves through during Wednesday, as you can see here. And then we've got this similar type of setup that we've got at the moment. Uh, you know, Atlantic weather fronts moving in from the southwest, engaging with cold air. So therefore, on the leading edge of that, we would see the potential for some snow. Then milder air moves in. This fight back and forward between mild Atlantic and cold continental or cold Arctic. So we're not out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination. This is the ECMWF solution here for the same, same time frame. Taking a look at the broader picture, and you can see here that uh, that system moves up from the southwest, bringing all the mild conditions with it. Again, like the GFS, it's seeing snow starting to break out across the far north. As that area of low pressure slips to the east, we'll open the door to the Arctic. We'll follow the lines of equal pressure, the isobars, all the way up into the Arctic. So this is the response to that major sun stratosphere warming. It isn't just a week and it's gone. It is lingering through at least the 15th through the 18th of the month. We will eventually pull out of this. And I think we will get potentially a milder run in the last 10 days of the month. That being said, I still think that we've had enough cold air during the front half, you know, two, three weeks of the month that this month will wind up firmly below average in terms of temperature. So as you can see here, we continue with that northerly flow into the middle portion of the week. We've got these features running south in that cold northerly flow so we're going to enhance the potential for snow across particularly northern half of the british isles then as we start to push towards the latter half of the week similar to this week it's almost identical near enough we've got snow um you know breaking out as that moisture engages with the cold but notice here that the the, the ecmwf is keep forcing these areas of low pressure further south and again that is the work of the strap warming it forces the storm track further south as that cold air bodily shifts south. It forces everything south with it. So very interesting to see how this cold air tries to linger on. Let's have a look at the 50 temperatures actually and I'll try and close with this. I'm going to have a global weather and climate report tomorrow. Heck of a lot of stuff going on. California continuing to get buried in snow we're seeing outrageous midsummer level warmth in china so stay tuned to the global weather and climate report tomorrow if you haven't already done so by the way hit that subscribe button keep up to date with all that's happening because it is an exciting weather pattern that's for sure so colder getting kicked out of the way with milder coming in from the southwest during the course of the next 24 hours then in comes that next surge of colder as you can see here maybe not quite as cold the column as it is but in the past few days but certainly cold nonetheless then we've got this fight back and forward between mild and cold and i do think that we will probably in the final 10 12 days of the month get out of this um, but you know, do we see cold coming back in during the month of April? I wouldn't be surprised actually. That is definitely what I think is possible. So, lots of things to consider. Look at, we'll look at snow charts. Uh, we will have a spell of snow uh, across Scotland, especially across higher parts during the course of this evening. So, do watch if you're out on the roads. Possible teams below freezing once again across the far north of Scotland before that milder air eventually moves in and we'll have a look at the snow charts in the next couple of days as well so thanks for watching hope you're enjoying your weekend stay tuned hit the like button subscribe share with your friends and family and I'll see you again hopefully tomorrow with more bye for now